I really like the Hydroform, and if you've got a sauna test Veo like me, here's how to set it up on that. Let's get right into it. When you boot up the machine, you're gonna be looking at a screen like this. You're gonna hit Create Configuration. It's a phased array setup, and we'll set the thickness of the material, in this case, a quarter inch, 6.4 millimeters. I'll go into my USB key, down to my list of Olympus probes, dial right down to the bottom, and I'm gonna to try to find an I4 or an I8 probe. I don't have the I8 probe definition, which is in the Hydroform 2. I have the I4, which is the original Hydroform probe. Same pitch, same number of elements. That'll work fine. Now we'll go over to the wedge menu. You could make a water wedge of 14 millimeters high. I'm gonna show you how to do this by just selecting no wedge at all. For focal law type, we actually have three choices, sauna test, SIVA, or ES beam tool. In this case, we're just doing everything in the box. So it's the sauna test law, and we're gonna select a linear pulse echo group with a four element aperture, and we're gonna fire all the way from element one to element 64. Now we need to set the index offset. I'm gonna change the value to 30 millimeters. Why is it 30 millimeters? If zero is right in the middle of a 64 element transducer and you move half of that all the way to the left or 32 millimeters, you end up on the outside edge, but we had a four element aperture. So then you gotta move back two millimeters to get to the middle of that. And we'll go to the next menu. It says encoding setup, time-based. No, of course not. We wanna use both the scan and index axes. Now comes the fun part. You get to pump up that water bottle, turn on the water supply, and then lift that probe up, push it down, and then lock that into place. And you'll see our screen fills up with lovely signal. Remember, we did this all without a wedge. So we've got this big white gap on the top, which is all that time in the water. We wanna ignore that. So I'm gonna set this to about 19 microseconds. And then what I'm gonna do is change the range because I got way too much in there. Now I can see the interface signal and two back walls. Now I'll set the focusing for all that that's gonna matter. It's a 6.4 millimeter plate, so I'll set this to five, that should be all right. To turn on the eye gate, we're gonna go into the scan menu under IFT active. We're gonna change that to yes. You're gonna see it opens up this great big huge gate over here. I'm just gonna pull it so that it lines up with that. And as you can see, if I move across all the VPAs, that eye gate will work perfectly for all of them. Now to see the effect of this, you're gonna press on whatever view you want, go back over to the view menu for that, and down here where it says IFT culling, you're gonna turn that on. Look what happened to our A scan. Now my entry signal is right at the left-hand side, just like it would be if you were doing, say, zero degree contact inspection with a mono element transducer. You can do a TCG for hydroform inspection if you want to. I didn't do one last week with the OmniScan video, but I will do one today with the VAO. So you're gonna go into calibrate, TCG, uh, curve type is TCG here. Uh, calibration mode is automated and uh, range path is 25. That's good, just so long as we can see two complete back walls. Uh, we're gonna go here next. Uh, this is probably fine like that. And then the box starts, I'm gonna start that at five millimeters. Uh, the depth interval, we'll set it to the part thickness. That looks pretty good. It captures the entire first back wall. Hit next, apply TCG at reflector hit next reflector, hit apply TCG there. Next, I'm gonna accept that, we're done. Now we need to set the data source for the C-scans. Go into the view tab, if you slide down, it says depth amp mode. I don't wanna see the amplitude displayed there, I wanna see depth. The data gate is gonna be gate number one. Now what we have to do is move gate number one over that first back wall echo. So to do that, I'm gonna click on the A scan, I'm gonna go over to cursor, and I'm gonna make sure that it says gate number one, gate start, I'm gonna start that around four millimeters, that's okay, and then with my finger here, I'll just kinda of slide it around, and I like that position right there. We're not done with this menu just yet, we have to change the triggering mode of gate number one. We do not want it to trigger on the peak, I want it to measure on the leading edge. Now let's adjust the palette for the Merge C scan so we're ready to go. You're gonna press on Merge C, go into the View menu, that View Palette, I am gonna switch that to Spectrum Inverted, and the Palette Depth Low, I'm gonna change that to four millimeters. Palette Depth High, just something over nominal, I'm gonna say seven millimeters. I'm gonna verify that my signal looks good, and away we go. You can see on here there's some black strips, and what's that? Just like we did on the OmniScan video, that's actually a little bit of noise. You can see there's the gate actually picking up that little piece of noise right there. If I move that gate over like that, it cleans right up. 
Then if I want, I could make some fine tuning adjustments on the palette. So I can pull the top down a little bit like there and adjust the bottom and just bring up that detail right there in the deepest spots. And that's basically it. And if I take this image and kind of digitally superimpose it on the plate, you can see that it matches really well. That's Hydroform on a Sonatest Veo. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe buttons and thanks for watching.